then I guess you get some. <laughs> <laughs> but wisdom would tell me to guard my mouth. Right? To guard my mouth. Yeah. To guard my mouth. Yes. And when we meditate on the word, that even, even speaking the word out loud to us. You know, and it's funny, just even how people learn in classroom, how do we learn? The teacher talks to us. Yes. That when, when you sit them in a room and give them books and make them read and take a test, their scores are not anything no. near when the teacher <laughs> talks to them and explains to them and, and read. What, why do we read out loud in school? We read out loud in school, right? Yes. We need to read out loud in this school yes. because yes. this yes. word yes. is the power. These are the wow. seeds. But we have to speak them to sow them. Yes. We, these, these words, these, these seeds, these presents, these gifts are everything we need to sustain us and give us the answer to every situation. Yeah. But reading them is only part of it. Understanding yes. them is only part of it. Speaking them is what changes things around us. So, anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies? Yes. We were talking about the same thing on Wednesday night. And what, I, what stuck out to me on Facebook through this hurricane was the prayer we request from all my friends in Texas. I mean, it went on and on and on and on. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And God just spoke to me and said, it was like he was just standing there with his arms folded and saying, I've done everything I can do. You have the power and authority. Yeah. You stand against this. Come on, man. There was a Christian yes. meteorologist that was on television, <clears throat> and he said, he explained the storm, how it worked, and he said, the shear goes up from the eye of the hurricane. He said, all, they, all that has to happen is for that shear to be stopped. He mm. said, pray against it. There you go. Speak to Speak it. You have the power and the yes. authority, he said, because when that shear is broken, the storm would collapse. Mm -hmm. But it just broke my heart. I mean, we know we pray, mm -hmm. but when we have the power and authority yes. and authority yes. given to yes. us, we're supposed to speak to those things. That's and right. That's exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. The authority that he's placed in us. Yes. He's not up there going to answer the prayers that he's given us the power to. That's right. Yes. Control. That's yes. And I was thinking about that same thing after we talked. And what occurred to me is, um, well, it's like I talked about a couple of Wednesdays ago about discernment, right? This word, where we aim it, makes yes. all the difference. We yes. have authority yes. over yes. the natural yes. world. Yes. We have authority yes. over Satan and the works of the devil. We do not have authority over people. No, right. that's exactly we, we, The word should only ever be, it, as a Christian, the word should only ever be spoken to a person to speak a blessing. Yes. If you speak a curse, yes. you curse yourself yes. because yes. you're judging. Yes. And as you judge, you're being judged. And cursing something is judging. So we have got to be careful. Yes. And we only have authority. We have complete authority over the natural world. Yes. We have complete authority That's to right. speak to storms and yes. expect them to become. Yes. Yeah. The situations we have yes. authority over. Yes. Finances we have authority over. Relationships we don't because it's a person. We can only pray a blessing and we can pray for the enemy to be revealed and put it out, but we cannot pray against a person. Yeah. Um, we're two or three. I mean, I think God really, really wants us to get this. Same thing. I mean, I wasn't here Wednesday, but Friday at work, um, I have a co-worker. Um, she believes, but I know she doesn't go to church. I don't know what her background is as far as growing up I probably, I'm guessing, just visits the church every now and then. <clears throat> but she has severe anxiety attacks. And she calls them, I'm having a moment, can you? And she, it's been a struggle for her to even get to work. And she was having one of those moments on Friday. And it was chaos everywhere. And I became distinctly aware of the fact that I was the calm in this entire storm. And I was, it's fine, it's fine, I got this. I mean, every, every little thing yes. that everybody was just up in arms about, um, I was okay. And I wasn't like, oh, God, you gotta help me, God, you gotta help me, or whatever, it just was. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as I was sitting there trying to do my job, I just got this overwhelming urge, get up and go to her. And so I went over to her and I told her, I said, listen, and then I told you, I, I, I have told her in the past that I would pray for her, and I told her, and 
I'm still praying. I have been, and I'm still praying for you. I said, but I said, this is simply an attack of the devil. It's, and I said, and it's not acceptable. I said, not, we're not mad at you and saying it's not acceptable. I said, spiritually. I said, this is not acceptable. We have authority. We have power in this earth. We have to speak the word. And I'm going to get a list of, of scriptures for her. And I said, you have got to speak that. This has to go because his word cannot return to him void. But given what my mom said and what you've said and just my day on Friday, God really wants us to know we have the authority here. Right. We have nothing to fear. We have all the power in this earth. We need to choose yeah. our words in agreement with his word. And <coughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. Amen. 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 You know, just to your point, the scripture says, speak to the mountain. Speak yes. to the mountain, but it says pray for those who despite the yep. Yes. So that's the division. That's the, the different circumstances, situations, attacks. Yes. Uh, as you said, finances, uh, health, all of those things. We speak to those things. Yes. When it's people, we pray. Yes. For their understanding to be light, for them to be uh, open to the Spirit of God, so on and so forth. So speak to the situation and pray for the pray for the people, even those that despite the mm -hmm. Yeah, and I always think of Jesus with Peter. He yeah. said, Satan, get me behind me. He was talking to Peter. He told Peter, you're the rock of my church. Yes, that's that's when he spoke to Peter. But he looked Peter in the eyes and said, Satan, get me behind me. Because Peter was unaware. Right. Right. But it wasn't Peter he was saying that to. And that's what, as that's wisdom. That's the grown-up things of the faith, right? Amen. The wisdom and the discernment to know the difference. Amen. Amen. You know, our, our people are never our enemy. No. Right. People are never, they're our brothers and sisters. They're never our enemy. But the enemy is sneaky. Yes, that's um, Evelyn's Mike, grandson Mike, finally called her yesterday, so she's just uh, praying that he'll go ahead and turn himself in and that the Lord continues to move in this situation. Um, yeah, I uh, lost my billfold on the south side the other day, and I got a call from the Des Moines police yesterday, and and I was out walking yesterday to go to the store, uh, and I'm like, God, you know where this billfold is? I have no idea where this thing is. And I mean, while I was walking, the cops called me and says, it's here, and all your money is inside of it, and your cards are all here. And, and so I just thank the Lord that, you know, whoever turned it in was an honest person. And, and um, we had a situation. My car uh, was having some issues, and I had went to the garage, and... They told me $950, and I'm like, okay, nope, not going to happen. So I was able to find somebody to fix it for less than $200. I think I was probably being ripped off there a little bit. Yeah. So I thank the Lord, you know. It's like, God, you know somebody that can fix this car for me for a lot less than, than that kind of money. And um, as we continue to pray and ask the Lord to... Bless our finances. I got a call from Berkshire Hathaway Realty, which I've hardly cleaned for at all, and uh, got a job to do a cleaning for them that paid for my car repair. So I just thank the Lord for His faithfulness. I know it may sound like a farm here to a lot of these people about Texas, but uh, you know all this stuff, and I. We have all this problem at work, you know, I'm sitting here, and beneath this word, I came up with a saying, remember to hold your horses and not say, hey, <laughs> blame the other person, then you're going to be stuck in the, sham, in, the, in the shed and worrying about your troubles and you're never going to get through it. That's so I know it's corny. <laughs> it's so don't corny. horse around in the first place. That's why I said I don't like people that are lazy that make it harder for me to work. And I had to, some guy started to, some stupid thing of stereotyping me. I said, I'm not putting up with it. And somebody that's Christian is says, that is incredible. I mean, James worked his tail off. We had all three cards out there, and I was working my tail off, and then asked me why I was moving one card at a time. I said, there's no cards out there because of our customer have used them all. And we really have to stand in the gap. I mean, and like I say, this church, even though I attend an August, is still my dwelling place. I came in here and still played drums with a sore arm and found out what the problem is, found out they had a tooth surgery, and they found a dead tooth in there. 
I didn't know that, mm. and it made me so weak in, 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 in this. But I realized that the Lord is still working through me, and if I hadn't found that, I would have been worse off. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. But, Amen. But it just shows to, just to, to rely on the Lord, and even there's even the uh, the amplified version of, of the word, you know, with the, the U version, which I look at all. So God bless you guys. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, we have a president that declared this day is a day of prayer. Exactly. For, for the country and for the hurricane victims. And we've been blessed to have, you know, somebody that would stand up and for the principles and for the Christian faith that we so, you know, behold mm -hmm. in this nation. Amen. And I like what you were showing or telling the earlier about, you know, authority of the spoken word. <coughs> the voice, you know, authority we have. And we get thinking, you know, this, the, the human race is the only race has the ability to create within itself God created being. Mm -hmm. you, you said he breathed in us and we became a living soul. Yes. yes. We have the ability to recreate the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. God given creation. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we really realize just how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. In other words, we create an individual the memorable guy spiritually. And we've got to realize that has <coughs> no other creation has that appeal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that was something God put in us and then he said we he created us in his image. Mm -hmm. We understand how valuable, how <coughs> precious we are in his sight. Mm -hmm. uh, it changes a little bit what we think about, you know, sure, yes. the things around us. dovetail on the back of that the breathing animals he created with breath. The breath that he put in Adam wasn't the same that they were talking about. Yes, he, Adam got the breathing just like the animals did, but God breathed in more than just the breath. You know, he didn't realize that it's the consciousness, the understanding, the, the wisdom that was to come forth, the spirit. So when it just says he breathed in them, that wasn't just a breath oxygen to get his life going. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, we bring the spirit in us and we're the only ones that have the ability to speak. To speak the word. I mean, in the word, in the word. I'm always fascinated when the scientists want to claim you know, the, the theory that we evolved out of apes is comical to me, but yeah. you know, they can teach tricks, right? They can teach them words. They can teach them how to mean words, mm -hmm. but they can't speak. That's right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's right. 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 Anyone, yeah. Uh, I'd like a, uh, a prayer of healing for a gentleman that I work with. Um, it, it's it's something how amazing how uh, God puts people together. Uh, this gentleman, I've been at the new job roughly uh, four months. I rarely speak to him, just pleasantries. He's a forklift driver, so he's going back and forth. Um, he has prostate cancer. Anyway, on Friday, there was very few people there. There was maybe ten people in the uh, we got a chance to speak, and you know, saying that he has prostate cancer and this and that. And uh, he asked me, he said, Are you religious? And I said, No, sir, I'm not. I said, I'm a Christian I'm a believer. And he's a believer as well, and he believes in the healing power of Jesus Christ. Um, but his name is Roger. Uh, and and what, it really blessed me that he said, He. After we were done, he said, "I have a feeling you are a believer." Right. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't like I said I rarely speak to him. Well, I was supposed to share this a couple of Wednesdays ago when the Pastor was gone and when we had prayer after the service. Um, <coughs> this is a little bit different. So, what the Holy Spirit just keeps speaking to me 
is as a church, well, at, when our families get together for prayer, when you're together with your Christian friends, as a church, as the whole body of Christ, we need to be praying that one of the last things that Jesus prayed is that his disciples, the church, would be one as he, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. And I feel that, you know, right now we're seeing some division happen, but I really believe the Lord, the Holy Spirit's been warning me that the enemy's going to try to do some more division, and that in your family, it, with your Christian friendships, and the church as a whole, we need to start praying to be one as, as we're one, and we need to also <coughs> abide in Jesus that he may abide in us. Yes. So, Amen. just... Yes, yes. Amen. That's good. Uh, traveling mercies for everybody that's gone. I got Tim and Lee texts that they were going to be out. Um, I'm sure Joey and Toby are gone out too with their families. I uh, also want to pray for one of our youths who had a, uh, a young man get hit by a truck on a bicycle and passed away. So just pray for her and pray for the family of this boy and the situation involved. Thank you, Jesus.
Friday. So Woohoo! Best Friday night of the month. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. It's an all lighter this month. Do you have anything you want to share about? Yeah, we're going to just continue in where we left off last month. We're not finished. There's a, just a whole different realm of things happening. Um, we're just going to continue to pray for our nation, for Israel. Uh, just seek his face. See what he wants specifically for this place, uh, this dwelling, this fellowship, and also for this region. <clears throat> we'll have communion. We'll observe Holy Communion. Uh, we will pray for each other. Uh, we will pray for things that the Lord brings to each and every one of us. Everyone who comes participates. <clears throat> so, if you don't think you have anything to bring, guess what? Uh, just like what happened at Roberto Wednesday night, he started sharing a little bit of something and God just turned him into a fire hose and just blasted things all over <laughs> the place that the Lord was showing through him. Um, <clears throat> as, as it was written in the New Testament that... Uh, uh, when you get brought before your accusers and stuff, don't think about <clears throat> what you're going to say before you get there. When you get there, the Holy Spirit will reveal what He wants. So, all I can say is, and even those watching the broadcast and those who will view this in the future, uh, short future here, uh, come. The Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants to release through you. All those that come, everyone will use. Guarantee it. It's happened in the past, and He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And Tom Stamen will be here Tuesday night, September 26th at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, and that's, this really isn't our service, but uh, where they were uh, originally going to hold the meeting, there was some sickness with the home meeting. And uh, so they had to cancel, but he wanted to still have, make it available for those people who would normally go to that meeting. So we are allowing them to use our facilities here. And of course, everyone is welcome. Uh, I talked to Mike, I don't know where anybody is in terms of the worship team, but if you can and want to, uh, they would be grateful for any uh, worship at the beginning of the service. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. Be here and be part of the service at the same time. Please help me get, uh, get going. And we'll, all we're doing is so a so we're just letting them come and use it. I'll be here just simply to open the mock up afterwards. And anybody who wants to come participate and be part of it, you can so see it at the same time by just being there and being a part of what he's trying to do. You may agree uh, to, to uh, Peter's point. We need to come in the unity of faith. That's what the Bible tells us. It doesn't say that we're going to agree on doctrine. It doesn't say that we're going to agree on every bit of doctrine and uh, everybody's own particular hermeneutics and their idea of how they approach the uh, theology. But we can all come together and agree that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Savior. He is the one that points us Amen. to salvation and eternal life. So uh, we can agree with Catholics. We can agree because we're not judging who's saved, who isn't saved. That's not our job. Our job is to come together in the unity of believing in Christ as our Savior, as our Lord and our God. So uh, that's what we're trying to do with Tom. And Tom does a great work with orphans and widows uh, in a lot of third world countries. And this gives us an opportunity to sow into that in a small way, but it could increase because of what he's doing. So, again, anybody that wants to come be a part of it, uh, more than welcome. And if anybody from the worship team wants to participate, be a part of that, we to help them establish a kind of spiritual setting. You know what we do with worship and how it affects some ministry. And so it can help them to reach other people. Uh, and just a reminder, we'll get a slide eventually, but um, the women's ministry, we're having our fall conference. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, November 11th. Um, it's going to be Veterans Day, so ladies, we'll let the boys get you a boys on Veterans Day. But, um, <laughs> uh, we're going to kind of do a similar time as, as last time. We're going to start, I don't know if it's 10 or 11, we're starting that Saturday. We're going to have... Um, the guest speaker, Garden Gate Ranch, will be here speaking about the ministry um, to get the women out of sex trafficking. Um, and uh, I believe uh, some other ministry possible. We'll talk to the ladies and see who's going to talk. I think Sarah um, wants to speak this time. So, And then we're going to have a lunch. And then this afternoon, in the afternoon, we're thinking we'll just have perhaps some fellowship. I think we were kind of lacking in that last time. but. Um, 
scheduled to be determined, but it um, will be an amazing day for all the ladies. So there's um, posters, there's full page posters in the back if you want to start posting it anywhere. Um, there's there's postcard invitations. So guys, if you know a lady that you think would like to come, feel free to grab a postcard and share it. And ladies, feel free to invite all your girlfriends. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I guess now, I'm trying to think of why I'm distracted. I'm so excited about the women's conference. I'm thinking all the things I want to do. <laughs> uh, let's take it off for this morning, shall we? Uh, Rod and Eric, do you two want to come take the offer this morning?
receive the wind, church. It's time to let it blow out of us. We need to release the wind, church. We've been poured into for many years, church. Hallelujah. I see Christians crying out, crying out, crying out. I'm trying, I'm thirsty. If you have a Lord in there, there's a reservoir. There's an ocean within you that needs to be released. Don't come up to me and tell me you're dry. There's that river in there. Maybe your flesh is dry, but your spirit is full if you have accepted the Lord. Yeah. And I'm tired of seeing the church that is full of the Lord. It is full of the Holy Spirit saying, I'm dry. You have rivers of living water in you that you need to release. Oh, shit. What are you saving it for? What are you saving it for? Are you waiting for a famine or a drought? Yes, there is a drought and a famine in this land. A spiritual drought and a famine in this land. It's time for you to release those reservoirs of living water. And you've had fire fall on you many times. I even know the fire tunnel that was going on last night in the city. How many times have you run through a fire tunnel? How many times have you been filled with the Holy Ghost full of fire? When are you going to release some of that fire? When are you going to release some of that fire? It's time to release the wind. It's time to release the rain. It's time to release the fire. The ground is ready. The harvest is ready. It's been ready. It's just waiting for you. The Lord has done everything He's going to do. He's just waiting for us. He's just waiting for us. And I pray for those that are not here today that are part of this fellowship. Burn today. Wherever you're at, burn for the Lord today. Burn for the Lord. Pour out the river of water wherever you're at today, or your family and friends. Let the wind be released. Let every knee bow where you're at right now. Let every knee bow where you're at right now. And all the land. Let them say this word. I see the Lord. 
Christ in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whether you know it or not, you are filled with the glory of God. Hallelujah. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in you, the Father. And all is in Christ. Christ is in you. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Praise the Lord. That's our identity. That's our reality. Praise God. And if you can believe it, nothing should be impossible to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise the yes, Lord. He is great and greatly to yes, be There is none like him. Yes, Both the true and living God. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, Mike, and the worship team. Give them a hand this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you again, and the young people can be dismissed. Now, Sarah. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, God bless all of you for being here. Amen. A lot of people are off today because of the holiday, and that's okay. Praise the Lord. Campgrounds are all full. And... <laughs> Good. Good to be with family and enjoy the holiday. Praise the Lord. But I'm grateful for you that are here. Without the smell of barbecue in the air, praise the Lord, just the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Uh, before I get lost in that, uh, I've got a lot of scripture this morning, so uh, Sheila gave me a, a look. Of, I think it was the Holy Ghost. It's all good. Might have been disdain, but it's a long ways from here to so I'm going to say. Amen. But I want to begin in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, and we'll read verses 26 and 28. I've got a, a, quite a few scriptures here just to open up to set the, uh, to kind of establish the context uh, this morning. I do appreciate all the testimonies, uh, prayer requests, and so forth that were given this morning because they all do relate to uh, what I feel like the Holy Spirit has spoken to me uh, to share with you this morning. Praise God. Amen. We live in a time where religion just is not going to get it done. And in fact, uh, religion hasn't been able to get it done for the last 6,000 years. And uh, it's led us to a relationship that can get it all done. That can get her done, praise the Lord. And uh, that's where we have to keep our focus, praise God. <laughs> So, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 26 through 28, beginning at verse 26, he said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. Uh, chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Remain staying here in Genesis. Chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, or freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Chapter 3, and verses 1 through 5. Still in Genesis, chapter 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall know, not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, in case you missed the three scriptures prior to that, we already know that they were already like God. Right. They were created in the image of God. So Satan has come to, to steal from them their identity. Trying to plant a thought that you are not who God said you are. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Alright, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Matthew 1, uh, 4, 1 through 4. So then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, same language that we saw back in the garden, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen? James chapter 1, verse 23 and 25. James 1, 23 through 25. And here we are. For if any of us be hearers of the word and not doers, then we're like a man that looks into a mirror and he sees himself and then he goes away and right away, as soon as he goes away, he forgets what he just saw in the mirror. He forgets who he is. Amen? Satan is in the business of deceiving he is a liar. Yes, he is. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. He's the father of lies. He Amen. is the one that birthed lies into this world. Amen? In John 10.10, 10, it says the thief comes but to steal, or only for this purpose, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if he can steal your identity, who you are in Christ, whom God has said that you are, then he can kill and destroy everything else in your life. First thing he has to do is steal your identity. Right. Get you right. to believe something other than what God has said about you. Once he's done that, once he gets you believing something other than God's truth, he has access now to kill your dreams, to kill your hopes, your future, and mm -hmm. to steal every yes. good thing that you have in your life. Yes. Yeah. Healing, wholeness, health. Prosperity, all of those things he comes after. Amen. Yes, sir. Let's go. I want to go to Daniel chapter one and read verses one through eight. Daniel uh, one verses one through eight. How many of you know the story of Daniel? Praise the Lord. We can read it, read it. <laughs> now I know some of you have read this. You're just not raising your hand. You're just trying to be hard. <laughs> Same thing happened last Sunday when I asked about Ruth. <laughs> Nobody raised their hand. I thought, wait a minute. I can't. I don't have time to explain this whole thing. <laughs> I know you've read Ruth. I know you've heard stories, right? Okay, so we're, we're not there anymore. Now here we are. A week later. Dan. Dan who? Nobody's heard of Daniel. What? Right. Oh, Daniel. Danny. Hey. You're talking about Daniel? <laughs> I'm here. No, no. We're talking about Daniel. So in the third year of the... Here's what happened. Israel refused to trust God. They wouldn't trust God. And because they wouldn't trust God, they overworked the land. They, uh, they, they uh, rebelled against the, the promises of God. And so God said, because you... You have refused. Now, this is the way he, he terms it. This is the, the, the metaphor. You wouldn't let the land rest. You didn't obey the Sabbath. You would not enter into the Sabbath. Therefore, I'm taking you out of the country so that the land will rest. So there will be a Sabbath rest 
you just won't be there to appreciate it because you're going to have to go into captivity because you won't rest in my promises. Amen. And for that reason, I'm going to empty the land. Right. So that the land will have the Sabbath rest. He's trying to show us something very powerful for the future as well as for the people that were living at the time. So they were taken into captivity. And all of the, uh, the ones that were killed and uh, destroyed, they were taken off to Babylon and into captivity. And that's where we find Daniel. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, king of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. God, in other words, allowed this. He didn't intervene. He allowed just what was happening to happen. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the, his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Praise the Lord, if you can keep it growing. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So the king has prescribed this uh, diet and lifestyle for them, and at the end of three years he wants them to come and he's going to judge them. Uh -oh. Children of who? Okay, now among these were of the children of Judah. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Praise the Lord. Now, Babylon, and I, I'm not even going to ask, praise the Lord. <laughs> Babylon comes from the word battle. Remember when there was this rebellion against God and they were going to build the tower that would reach to heaven, they were going to be their own God and they were going to reach up into heaven and control everything and so on and so forth. And God caused a confusion of their languages. Called it battle. How many have ever heard, you know, I just don't want to listen to that battle. It's just confusion. It's just chaos. So God confused their language, and that from that came the country of Babylon. A nation of confusion. Praise the Lord. So, confusion and religion. A religion that's confused. We heard about their gods, took them back, took the the the, the instruments in the temple and they took them back and put them in the house of their gods, right? Alright, look at 2 Corinthians now, chapter 5 verse 17 and 18. I'm showing you how the devil works, praise the Lord. The reason for, for confusion was because the enemy had gotten in there and they were going to be their own god. Praise the Lord. They were going to create their own way of reaching up into the heavens and controlling and so on and so forth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us, then, this ministry of reconciliation. What? What did Jesus, how did Jesus reconcile us? He put us back in the position we were supposed to be in, the position we were in before the fall. God has given us the, uh, the ministry of reconciliation so that we can bring the earth, the entire earth that He told us in Genesis chapter 1 that we had authority over and dominion over so that we can bring it back in to the place it was yes. in creation. Yes. That's why the whole earth moans and groans, including our own spirit, for the manifestation of the sons of God, yes. because he's trying, that whole earth knows it's screwed up. It's not yes. supposed to be this way. Yes. Amen? But it's up to us, who have dominion, yes. to take dominion. Yes. Amen? So, we are born again. We have new DNA. 
Now, you see these commercials all the time on TV now. I didn't know what I was, so I got my DNA and sent it in and found out I'm 26% uh, Cocker Spaniel. I don't know, whatever they are. You know, all, they all find they're 26% of something. The truth is, we are, everybody's some of something. Everybody is part of the original creation. I, I did a genealogical thing on my own one time through, I uh, forget what it was called now, and uh, found out that I have every kind of ethnic background that you can imagine. You can go back, you, I went back as far as the 1300s, I believe it was, 13 or 1400s. Of course, we're in Europe, and all, all these people were coming from all over the world. Because there's a war here, so they escape and go, you know, there's a war in England, they go to France, there's a war in France, they go, they go to the Netherlands, they, there's a war in the Netherlands, they go back to Belgium or someplace. I mean, they're just constantly intermarrying with everybody on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise the Lord. We were born in the image of God. We have new DNA. We are royalty. Yes. Yes. Knowing who you are in Christ is critical for you to escape the influence of the lies of the devil. If you don't know who you are, he can manipulate you and control you and use you, amen, like a toy. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. You are children of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. Now I want you to think about what, what was happening here with Daniel. Daniel was given a different name. Why? Because the enemy's trying to steal his identity yes. as a child of God, as a yes. as a person of God. Yes. So immediately the first thing they do is change the name. Hmm. Amen. Change his name to Belteshazzar, which is belonging to confusion or belonging to Belshazzar, which was the original king of Babylon. Praise the Lord. Daniel, the name Daniel means he who God has judged. The first thing the king does is say, I'm going to give him three years. I want you to feed him certain things. I want you to dress him a certain way. I want you to, you know, to, to have their lifestyle be a certain way. And at the end of that three years, I'm going to judge. Yeah. Well, Daniel's name said he'd already been judged. Yeah. So the first thing, by God, not by this guy who thinks he's God, but by the God. Right. So here's the, here's the point. The first thing that they try to steal is thinking that judgment somehow is in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Our judgment is in Christ. It's already taken, been taken care of 2,000 years ago. In fact, if you go back to before the foundation of the world, we were in Christ. Amen. He was already judged, amen, yes. for the sins of the world. Yes. And he says, if I be lifted up, Amen. I'll draw all judgment to me. Yes. 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 You're not going to be judged. I'll be judged in your stead. Amen. But the first thing the enemy tries to do is tell you judgment's out here in the future somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You better you better be careful because God's going to get you. Yeah. God's going to judge you. Praise the Lord. So they change his name. Amen. Look at, let's look at this. John chapter 16, verses 8 through 11. Just to establish this fact. You have a new name. You are a new creature in Christ. And your judgment, if you are in Christ, is over. Praise the Lord. When He has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Mm -hmm. Of sin, because they believe not on Me. Praise the Lord. So, of sin, who is being judged of sin? Somebody who's not a believer. If you're a believer, your sin has already been judged in Christ. Am I right? Amen. So that's what he's talking about. A righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Amen? A righteousness because you're a believer. A believer in Christ because the judgment has been judged against Christ. A judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So, we, we've read that. We've had it preached to us that God's coming. God's going to come and He's going he's to judge you because of your sin. Amen. And He's going he's to punish you. He's going he's to uh, demand that you become more righteous. 
Amen? To escape judgment in the future. But that's what He's telling us. Your sin has already been judged in Jesus. You have no sin. Right. Because there's no law for you to break. Because the law has been fulfilled in Christ. He was already judged. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Judge sin. That's the unbeliever. Judge righteousness. That's the believer. You've been judged and determined to be righteous. Amen? Because Jesus was judged. Yes. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. Yeah. I'm not worried about the day of judgment. My day of judgment is long past. When the day of judgment comes, I'm going to stand... As Jesus, just like Jesus. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. I've already been judged in Christ. I've been found innocent, without fault. Yes. Accepted in the beloved. Amen. That's your identity, praise the Lord. Now, remember, these guys, these four guys, they refused to eat the stuff that was being fed to them. Praise the Lord. You might want to check your diet the next time you go to church. Find out what it is you're eating because that's going to be your right. You are what you eat. Remember the old saying? You'll become whatever you're consuming. If you're believing that your judgment's in the future, yeah. you're going to live a life of fear, anxiety, and stress. Yeah. If you believe that prosperity is only for those that are born into wealthy families who, who get the best education or who have the greatest opportunities, then you're believing a lie. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, let's go. Let's move on to Hananiah. You know what Hananiah means? Jehovah has favored. Mm. In fact, Hananiah is where we get the, also the name Hannah and also ha, Hana, which is grace. So he's saying, Hananiah is telling us Jehovah gives grace. He has favored us. So they changed his name to Shadrach. Shadrach is a moon god in Babylon. And so what did they do? They've given him a false concept of God and robbed him of the truth of God's favor. Praise the Lord. Talking about changing names. Talking about identity crisis here. Praise the Lord. Anybody ever freak out? I bet, uh, Sheila, I bet you were worried about identity theft when you lost your wallet. Amen? Not that there's some guy out there that wants to be, call, just call me Sheila. <laughs> no, there's a guy out there that would love to get his hands on your social security number, a credit card, a bank statement, anything, so that he can go in there and write a check, and then take out a loan, and then who knows what? <laughs> Why? Because his identity is all screwed up. He wants yours. Right. And that's what's happening here. They're trying to steal their identity, their favor with God by giving them a different name and causing them to see themselves in a different way. Right. Praise the Lord. So, he tries to rob them of God's grace, of God's favor. Mm. Then, the, then comes Mishael. That name means who is like God. Not, it's not a question. It's a, he, he's, he's stating a fact. Mishael, that guy's like God. How many of you know you were born in the image of God? When you were born again, you were recreated in the image of God. Amen. Put back to that original position. They're trying to steal that from him. Amen? He steals it. Then who is, he's like God, so they name him Meshach. Meshach is a Chaldean God with fangs and it shows him attacking and biting anybody who uh, doesn't agree with him or doesn't go along with his way of belief or, or what have you. So what is it doing? It's trying to steal the image of God as a God who loves you, who cares about you. Hmm. Amen? Hmm. Stealing this image of God in this guy's life. Hmm. Then there's Azariah. Azariah 
That name in Hebrew means who Jehovah or who God helps. Abednego, they change his name to. And Abednego is a servant of Nego, another Babylonian god. Again, trying to steal this guy's identity in Christ or in God. Oh, you yeah, understand the difference. Praise the Lord. God is our helper. They tried to steal that away from him. Yeah. Amen. Tell him that he, you're a servant of this, this Babylonian God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Yes. Not the world, not the system, not the, any of that. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Wow. Uh, let me read this to you. I'm going to read this from the, from the uh, Message Bible. But this is uh, Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 14. Again, this is in the Message Bible. So, with the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, that faithful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ being here for us, Christ being here for us, no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. God went for the jugular when He sent His own Son, he didn't deal with the problem as something remote and unimportant in His Son. Jesus is personally taken the human condition, entered the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code, weakened as it always was by fractured human nature, could never have done that. Praise the Lord. The law always ended up being used as a blank, as a band-aid on sin instead of a deep healing of it. Now what the law code asked for but we couldn't deliver is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's Spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focusing on self on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Mm -hmm. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what He's doing, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. But if God Himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of Him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome Him, in whom He dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. Yes. Yes. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, He'll do the same thing in you that He did in Jesus, yes. bringing you alive to Himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and He does as surely as He did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With His Spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as as Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So we've got to stop eating the Babylonian diet. The confusion, confusion of religion, amen. We need to go back and eat the bread of life. Back to the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Renew our minds to our true identity in Christ. Hallelujah. Back to the bread of life. A diet that produces the life of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Our true identity in Jesus. Amen. Go back to Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 if you would, Sheila. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. These guys knew their identity. 
We read on to where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego end up in a fiery furnace. They weren't going to back off. They said, our God is able to deliver us. So if He doesn't deliver us, it's okay with us because we'll just be in a better place anyway. Right. We're not believing the lies. We're trusting our God. And we need to be feeding on kingdom diet. We need to be feeding on we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The righteousness of God is your identity. That's who you are. I don't, we already read it in, in the Message Bible. Yes, there will still be the, the, the uh, behaviors will not correctly uh, align with your reality. You might do some stuff that is still quote unquote sin for a person that's not born again. It's not sin for you. Amen. I know. It's not a license. It's just that once we understand this, we can deal with things like that in a way that we can't as long as we're looking at it as my failure, my failure, my failure, my failure. Right. You cannot fail. You are more than a conqueror because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And your only way out of that false identity that the devil is trying to uh, stick into your core being, amen, <laughs> is to believe that you're the righteousness of God in Christ no matter what you do. Yes. Because the only way you're doing is going to change is if you're believing changes. Yes. Yes. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. All right. Exodus chapter 28, verse 30. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of the judgment the Urim, or the Urim is the way it's actually pronounced, and the Thuim. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. This is the first high priest. Jesus is our high priest. He bore the judgment yes. in his body. Yes. But here's the, here's the, uh, the, the analogy or the, or the metaphor, if you will, for what this is talking about. The Urim or the Urim was a white stone. And that white stone represented light or revelation. All right? So send the high priest breastplate. The Thummim is a black stone, and it declares innocence or perfection. So when they were trying to discern something, they would go to the priest, and the priest would check with the Urim and Thummim to find out what revelation God was trying to reveal to them and whether, in some cases, if somebody was guilty or innocent. There, there are different cases. You can look at one where a woman was, was accused of adultery and they went through this whole process. So all this stuff, is it, it's Old Testament, but it's, it's a type of the shadow of Jesus. Amen? So look, let's look at now Ezra. Ezra chapter, chapter 2, verse 61 and 63. Six, 61 and 63, I'm sorry. Ezra 62 Whoa. Ezra 2, verse 61, 63. Got my tongue in front of my eye teeth there. I couldn't see what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So, and of the children of the priests, the children of Tobiah, the children of Kohath, the children of Barzillah, which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillah, the Gileadite, and was called after their name. These sought their register among those who were reckoned by genealogy. Now let me stop right there for a minute. These are people coming out of captivity. Now in the process of time, over the time that they were in captivity, they intermarried. And it's telling us who they married. They were not other Hebrews. These were Midianites. These were people in the land where they were being held captive. So the Gileadite was called after their name. These sought their register. In other words, they tried to find their genealogy. Now they're not in captivity anymore. They want to know, who am I? Right? So they among themselves, they were reckoned by, the gene by genealogy, but they were not found in the record. Why? Because their names were all screwed up now, and they don't have their identity, their original identity. Therefore, were they as polluted, they were put out of the priesthood. They weren't allowed to come into the priesthood because they were polluted, and they couldn't find their identity in the genealogy. And the church uh, said unto them, they should not eat of the most holy things. How many of you know that all the meat and stuff that was left over from sacrifices, that was the high priest's meal. That's what they ate. So they bring a sacrifice, 
and they would offer up a, a, a he goat, a she goat, a, a, an oxen or whatever, and certain parts were used for the offering. The stuff that was left over went to feed the ministry or to feed the, the priests. Okay, that's what they're talking about here. So it said unto them, he said they should eat of those things until they could prove who they were. And so they stood up a priest until there stood up a priest with the hearing and the thumen. Somebody that could come up with what their identity was, whether they were righteous or unrighteous, amen, whether God had revealed to them, amen, their position, righteous or unrighteous, perfect, amen, innocent, see what I'm saying? That's what, that's what we're talking about. So they came out of this confusion, amen, still not knowing their identity. Yeah. They're no longer held captive. They've been set free, but they still don't know who they are. Yeah. They had been so manipulated and so controlled by the by the uh, captivity that they were under and the way that they operated, changing names and all these other things and, and their lifestyles and all that, that they come out of captivity. They finally got set free and they still don't know who they are. That's like 75% of the body of Christ. Yeah. We've been delivered from bondage. We've been set free yeah. and still don't know who we are. Yes. Exactly Still right. trying to figure it out, amen. So we're not a whole lot better than we were when we were in captivity. Yes, we're not in bondage to that, but we're still living as though that's our identity. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Genesis chapter 5. And I want to read verses 1 through 3 this time. And this goes directly to what somebody in here said, and now it's all gone from my mind who said it, but I did hear it. Amen. That we are born in the image of God, are we not? That's right. Praise the Lord, because we're born again. Alright? This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Right? Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. And after his image... Yeah. And called his name Seth. Huh. So everybody after Adam that gets born is not born in the image of God. They're born in the image of Adam. Yeah. Huh. So somehow we got to get back to that original image yes. that God created yes. man in his image. And that's what Jesus came to do. Yes. Every human being born since the fall, since Adam and Eve were ejected from the kingdom, or from the uh, garden, have been born in the image of man. They are not born in the image of God. That's right. Praise the Lord, because they are spiritually in darkness. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why Jesus had to suffer and die, that we might be redeemed to our original condition, which was innocence, not sinless, just innocent, as children of God. Amen. So instead of God's image, we got man's image. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We have been told, we, it has been determined by the Word of God, we are kings and priests, yeah. children of God, because we've been born again. Before we were born again, we were children of Adam. Yeah. Yeah. We're just out there to kind of make it on your own, do the best you can. That's not true anymore. Yeah. Right. We are the children of God. We are now kings and priests in this earth. As He is, Amen. so are we in this world. Praise the Lord. When ju whenever judgment comes, just say, look at Jesus. Yeah. The devil comes every day, multiple times a day, to judge you. Yes. Praise the Lord. And how is He judging you? He's judging you as a son of Adam, not as a son of God, because as a son of God, the judgment is already taking place. Yes. Yes. So he's got to convince you that you your identity is still that old man. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Alright, let's look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. Revelation 2 verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone what is a white stone? Revelation. Yeah. Right? Isn't that what I told you? Revelation. 
To him that overcomes, I'll give to eat of a hidden man and will give him a white snow. How do we overcome? We are made to be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Not by what we do, by what he's done. Yes. So we get a white stone. We get a revelation. And in that stone is what? A new name. Written. Yes. Which no man knows, save he yes. that receiveth it. Amen. You have been given a white stone, a revelation of who you are in Christ. Yes. That's your identity. Yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. You are the offspring of God. Yes. Amen. Whoa. Hallelujah. I'm not Amen. worried about revelation. Revelation, I got... I'm, I'm good with this, hallelujah. hallelujah. Because what I'm finding out is it's just giving me a revelation of who I really am in Christ, yes. and the devil is a liar, hallelujah. Yes. And that old man is dead. Yes. yes. You need a revelation. You need a white stone yes. revelation, yes. hallelujah, of the new name that God has given yes. you, hallelujah, that you are more than a conqueror, yes. that you can do all things, that you are a king and a yes. priest, hallelujah. And hallelujah. nothing shall be impossible to you if you can believe. Yes. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What's the revelation Amen. of you and your new name? Mm -hmm. You are perfect in Christ. Yes. You are innocent. That's the revelation. That's the new name. Perfection and innocence. You've been restored to the original condition. Yes. Innocence. In the image of God. Yes. And bless God, we better start living that way. Yes. If we want to get out of here with the stuff that we're supposed to get out of here with, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, authority, we, right. we need to start operating in the, our true identity. Amen. Come on. Yes. All right, praise the Lord. All right, let us, let, again, how did they get into this mess in the first place? Go to 2 Chronicles, Sheila. 2 Chronicles verse, uh, chapter 36. And we'll start with verses 13 and 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 13 and 14. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. This is the king in the time who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. These are believers, or supposed believers. They're Israelites. But they're not believing who they are. Right. Amen. And so they're they're turning away from God. They're rejecting God and His promises. All right, look at verse, uh, verse 20 and verse 21. Same chapter. Uh, verse 20 and 21. Mm. This is leading up to the captivity, to where we started here with Daniel. Then that had escaped from the sword, carrying he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. Uh -huh. Seventy years. Yes. yes. Remember Daniel's uh -huh. seventy year? It's all about this. It's about people not trusting in God, not resting in what God was capable of doing and rebelling against God so the land didn't get a Sabbath rest. They were working the land, they were doing all this, but that's just a metaphor for their own heart. Right. And so God said, I'm going to have a Sabbath rest whether you want to participate or not. If I have to take you out of this thing and get you out of the way, that's what will happen. Mm -hmm. Alright, 70 years. I mean, you know, 70 years is the year of completion. Amen. I told John that the other day, we got something to look forward to. He's already there, I'll be there in about six months. <laughs> I'm not talking about it's over. Right. There's a difference between being done and complete. <laughs> <laughs> to be complete means you, it's, everything's fulfilled, right? Yes. Seventy is the perfect number for God. Seven is the, is the year of complete, or the, the number of completion. And seventy is like completion upon completion. It's the, it's the right. fullness of what God's going to do. And that's what he's talking about here. Seventy, Hallelujah. praise the Lord, is the Sabbath rest. So if I'm off a lot more next year, I don't know why, praise the Lord. <laughs> Okay, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. Just to substantiate this just a little bit further. Daniel 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, Daniel understood by books 
the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. That's all talking about the very same thing. That God was going to establish a Sabbath rest, a 70 year Sabbath rest because they had refused to acknowledge it, the Sabbath rest in their day when they were there in the land. Amen. Are you with me still? Praise Amen. the Lord. All right. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 1 through 5. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise or in this way, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Because we don't want to enter into His rest or rest in the finished work of Jesus, it's up to us. We have to do it. Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Yes. You've got to learn to rest in your true identity yes. in Christ. Yes. Amen. Quit trying to be something you already are. Exactly. Just rest. Exactly. And watch God's favor begin to move. Amen. Yes. See what God can do yes. when you start resting in Him and trusting Him instead of your own ability, your own righteousness. For they, trying, going about to establish their own righteousness, lost the righteousness of God. Yeah, they did. Why? Because they tried to do it themselves exactly. instead of resting in the Sabbath. Come on. In Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, back. Let's go. Let, let me move on with this and try to wrap this up. Judges chapter 6. Judges 6, verses 3 through 16. Now I'm going to ask this just because I feel like a laugh here. How many of you read about Gideon? No, no. no you're not getting the flow. Praise the Lord. It's good. Amen. I know y'all were lying earlier when you said you hadn't heard anything about Daniel. <laughs> okay, you're under the blood. It's good. Thank God. I'm a little upset, but God's good with it. <laughs> so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bodies. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God, fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abirazite, and his son Gideon. His son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Do you want to go farther? Yeah, 6 through 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, Oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I serve, save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Praise the Lord. So God's speaking identity yeah, he is. to Gideon. Yes. Praise the Lord. 
If you believe what God says about you, yes. who you are in Christ, yes. nothing shall be impossible. That's exactly right. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Judges 6, if you can go back to verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Oprah that pertained unto Joash the Abizite and his son Gideon threshed wheat. Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Hiding wheat, bread. Are you with me? Yeah. Bread. In a wine press. Wine. Bread and wine. Yeah. Are you sick of your situation? Are you tired of your situation? Yeah. He had the bread and wine right there. As often as you do this, Jesus said, do it in remembrance yeah. of me. Yeah. Let it bring back everything that I am, everything that I've done, everything I will do. They're, they're going to have communion here on uh, when they have uh, prayer, when they have the house of prayer. Amen. I, I'm all for communion. We take communion. We don't do it a lot in the in the in our services, but uh, not because it isn't valuable, but simply because you ought to be doing it yourself. Yeah. Amen. And the other thing is, a lot of times we've turned communion into some weird ritual, yeah. amen, that has nothing to do with what, with what it was really all about in the first place. It's just what the point is back to Jesus, yeah. so that we're putting our confidence in Him. Right. That when you do that, healing can come, revelation yeah. can come, yeah. a breakthrough financially can come. At that moment, it can happen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has nothing to... It, it, it's just about getting us to refocus on Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. The supplier of all of our needs. Yes. Praise God. So, get the focus back on Jesus, not your Midianites. Yeah. And we all got Midianites hiding there in the caves. They're all around. They're looking at... Every time you turn around, there's another Midianite. Another obstacle, another lie of the enemy saying they're greater than you are. They're going to get your stuff. They're going to, they're going to mess your life up. You're going to be sick. You're going to have this disease. You're going to, you know, somebody else had it, so you're going to get right, it. Amen. Uh, you know, you're, you, 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 this job you got only pays X amount of dollars. You're never going to have anything. Your job is not your source. Your job is just a means by which God can bless you. But God's got all sorts of resources that He doesn't need just your job. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So get the focus back to Jesus. If you'll believe your identity in Christ, that's who God says you are, you're going to see the supernatural. Amen. Ordinary people become extraordinary when they believe what God says about them. That's the only difference. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Between the ordinary and the extraordinary is what that person believes about himself in Christ. Yeah. I'm talking about in the body. Hallelujah. Yes. The miracle that Gideon was looking for wasn't in heaven. It wasn't something far off that had to be prayed down. Amen. Amen. It wasn't something that had to be fasted into. That's right. Or, you know, subject yourself to a lot of pain and suffering and anguish and so forth to get this. The miracle was locked up in a man who didn't know who he was. Yes. yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm looking at miracles, yes. amen, right here. Hallelujah. I'm looking at the yes. truth because of, according to the Word of God. Yes, Lord. You have miracle power dwelling in you. That's who you are. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Mm. But until you know who you are, it's as much in bondage as you are. Yes. That's the truth. Tell Kathy by your own bad thinking. Yeah. By your own confusion brought on by the lies of the enemy and your flesh. Thinking, yeah. thinking. When we feed on the bread and the wine, when we feed on Jesus, yes. we do mighty acts of valor. Yes. Come on. Yes. People who believe their God shall do mighty works. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We do mighty acts of power. Look at Judges again. Judges 6, uh, verse 15. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to 15. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said unto him, Oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How am I going to save Israel? I mean, look at me. I'm a poor man from a poor family. Yeah. And I 
am the poorest in my family. Yeah. Not only is my family poor, I am the poorest. Mm. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Those are not reasons, church. Those are excuses. Yes, they are. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Because look at verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I'll be with you. And you will smite the Midians as one man. Uh-huh. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If God is for you, He can be against you. Amen. If you believe, all things are possible. If you believe what God says here about you, if you believe in your true identity, nothing shall stop you. Nothing can prevent you. Yes. Yes. Oh, Praise God. Judges chapter 7, verses 20 and 21. And we really are about done. Praise the Lord. Judges 7, verses 20 and 21. Three companies blew the trumpets, break the pitchers, held the lamps in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand to blow with all. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood, every man in his place, round about the camp. And all the house, all the host ran and cried and fled. <clears throat> all these Midianites, all these problems, all these natural things. When they did what God told them to do. The pitcher, you remember, you remember the story? They put a candle in a pitcher, inside of a pitcher, and they took a ram's horn. And they broke it. The picture, so as the light would shine out, and then they blew on the ram's horn, and the people freaked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Midianites freaked and killed each other. Mm -hmm. Picture, what's a picture? An earthen vessel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the light in the earthen vessel? It's a treasure. Mm -hmm. There's a treasure in earthen vessels, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe, the candle will be hid. Yes. Your light will be hid. Like it's under a bed or under a bush. Amen. If you believe, you'll break the picture. The earthen vessel will expose the glory of God, the light of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The ram's horn. How do you get a ram's horn? You got to kill a ram. You got to kill a male lamb to get it. And they blow the horn. We're talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Wow. And that death, burial, and resurrection, our redemption, our reestablished in our true identity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh -huh. It breaks open our earthen vessel and lets uh -huh. the light of who we are in Christ yes. shine out. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. It'll defeat every enemy. It'll scatter the enemy. <laughs> Cause them to devour one another. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are new creatures shining with the power and the glory of God. He said, my glory will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not just trying to preach something different here. I, I want us to experience yes. what this Bible is about. Yes. It's good. Our identity yes. in Christ. Who we are. Children of God. Don't let the Religion with the devil or fear rob you of your identity. Don't eat the crap the enemy's feeding. Yes. Amen. Feast on the bread of life. Amen. Every word about you from God. Yes, absolutely. And you shall be strong yes. and do great exploits. Amen. Yes. And God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes, Praise the Lord. He will. You have a name. Uh -huh. It's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Right next to that name, it says, Innocent, Perfect. Yes. That's who you are. Uh -huh. And that's what you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. If you can believe. You can let your light shine in a way that will cause the enemy to be scattered. To no longer be a hindrance to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go back to the wine press. 
look back at the bread and the wine and see yourself in the eyes of Christ. Renew, restore, make whole in Jesus. Yes. Nothing will be impossible. This isn't just this isn't semantics. This isn't just some gimmick. This isn't like three ways, you know, to get a new car. Mm -hmm. This is about how to have power over the enemy. Amen. To exercise authority over the devil. And you do it by the word of God. Amen. Somebody said it was written. Look, God spoke this so that it could be written. And it was written so that we could then speak. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is our identity. Anything that contradicts this is a lie of the enemy. Amen. And it's only there for one reason. That's to rob you of who you really are in Christ and what you have Sir. as your parents, as a brother, mm -hmm. an equal heir to Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen? So go in the power of His might. Hallelujah. Just do what God's Word says and watch what happens. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise the Lord. Got a new name. Sally's got a little white rock on our kitchen counter that one of the grandkids found. Amen. She's claiming it. Praise God. She's got it before Revelation. The book of Revelation. She's got it before <laughs> I haven't got mine, but I've seen it. It's bigger than hers. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yes. We all have been found innocent. Yes. And righteous in heaven. Hallelujah. And we've got a new name. We need to start using it. Amen. The name of Jesus. When I say the name of Jesus, I'm not speaking about something far off and distant no. and begging and pleading that they'll come. I'm just speaking the authority that I have yes. as a carrier, a bearer of that yes. name. Yes. Yes. And you should do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's go in the power of His might. Amen. Be who we are in Christ. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. are dismissed. In Jesus' name. Have a great holiday.